Hi, good evening everyone and welcome to live streaming of Dimapur today. Today we have a very special guest with us and he is no other than GB Kahuto Chisisumi. Thank you sir. He is a social activist, he is an anti-corruption activist and his name is always, uh, we, can see, we can see his name uh, coming in uh, newspapers, print media, social media, everywhere. And at the same time, he has got a good amount of uh, youths and intellectuals following him in social medias. And uh, we are very much thankful to Sir. Thank uh, you so much. Thank you, you so for much. giving me this opportunity. And uh, he is also the convener of Concerned People of Nagaland. Yes. The Concerned People of Nagaland, he will be telling us more about the Concerned, concerned People of Nagaland and what the group does and how, it active, uh, how it's working. And at the same time, we had some questions from bloggers too today, and we will be asking you. Yes, most welcome. But uh, sir, on your part, yes. being a social uh, anti-corruption activist or social yes. activist, we will be questioning you more on corruptions. Most welcome. Okay, uh, sir. And uh, okay, okay, okay. So okay, before okay, before we begin this uh, conversation, mm -hmm. uh, we just like to know some brief about you. Okay. From your side. Yeah? Uh, my father was uh, the late uh, Mr. Nivkasema. He's, uh, he's from Lokobo village. He was the mm -hmm. chief, uh, head GB. Okay, uh, but then he settled at Mokuchun town. He was one of the pioneers in Mokuchun town. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, involved with the uh, things, start of Fazilali College. Uh, yes, then there's a town higher secondary school. Uh, all these, uh, he was quite a very well known personality okay. at Mokuchun. And uh, my grandfather, uh, the late uh, Hekepur, mm -hmm. he was the one who uh, donated land to the American Baptist missionaries. Okay. Those See, uh, people have a very wrong conception that the British uh, encouraged Christianity, you know? but in actual fact, they discouraged the spread of Christianity. Mm -hmm. Because uh, Christianity meant education, education meant awareness of one's rights, yes. so the British didn't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. So. Bengt Ivor Anderson, he was the missionary who brought Christianity to the, to the Sunnis. Okay. So he went uh, searching, I, I believe he approached six different chiefs of six different areas. Okay. But all of them refused out of fear of the British, British. Colon uh, colonial administration. And it was my grandfather uh, mm -hmm. who gave permission okay. for this uh, Isotope Mission Center. Uh, where, where is that? Uh, that where is uh, near Apulto, okay. 7 kilometers from Apulto. That's uh, Zanabuda? Uh, yeah, it's Zanabuda district. Zanabuda. That was the first uh, uh, semi Christian mission center. Okay. Then, so uh, that land was donated by your grandfather? Uh, yeah, my grandfather and some of those. Uh, okay, which means like uh, uh, you belong to a first generation uh, of accepting Christianity? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You okay. can say that. <laughs> okay, okay. okay, thank you. And uh, uh, okay, and uh, uh, GB. Uh, why? How comes GB? Nah, so and uh, the, most of the bloggers no, they, they used to mention. Sunnis, they have a. We have the tradition no, of establishing new villages. Okay, okay. So my father he established this village in 19, 1969 at Dimapur. Okay. But since he was the only son, mm -hmm. like he could not rule two villages at once. No? Uh, okay. So Lokobo, uh, the village of my origin, okay. uh, that is being uh, thing. Uh, ruled by my elder elder brother. Elder brother, uh, okay. and uh, I was sent here. Okay. <laughs> so reject of the family. Okay, okay. <laughs> black sheep of the family. Yes. You, or you, you, you consider yourself as black sheep? Uh, no, <laughs> yes. no, I've done no, many activities which I'm not uh, proud of. No. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Anyway, thank you so much. I think uh, through your Facebook profile, we have come to learn that. Uh, mm. I mean, like we see that you are an alumni of uh, Fazal Ali College. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, see. Uh, my schooling was a straight St. Edmund's School, Shillong. Uh, but then uh, when I came to Nagaland, that's when I lost my way for quite some time. So okay. I was at Science College Kohima, then uh, Fazalali College. Uh, mm -hmm. And I spent more years in college than I did in school. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, uh, so you're uh, a very prolific writer. Uh, okay. Your opinions, uh, your advice uh, and suggestions, mm -hmm. it is being followed by many youths. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And we can uh, just figure out that uh, many admires you, many of the youths. Mm -hmm. And uh, so like we wanted to know from which school you were brought up, nah. your education. See, the thing is, the school you go to or the <coughs> educational institutions you attend mm -hmm. do not matter. 
Yes, sir. What matters is what you study. What you study. Now, see, in others, uh, you get a degree and suddenly you're considered an intellectual. No. That is not the case. No. Uh, you have to be a well read person. Well read person means you read books on all topics and all subjects. Okay. And uh, I have read uh, hundreds of thousands of books uh, on many topics. Okay, That's you're, why I you're, have a working knowledge of nearly any su every subject. Okay, your advice to the youth is to read more books. Yes, read. Because there's nothing like reading. Okay. When you read, you come across words which you don't understand, mm -hmm. but which you can understand from the context, from the sentence. Now, you don't have to look up the dictionary for every word you don't understand. You just read through and then you'll get the meaning. Okay. So that is how you build up your vocabulary, that is how you build up your writing skills. Okay. So reading is a must. Yeah, it's a very, very compulsory and I'm very saddened that young people these days no? uh, mm -hmm. have uh, lost this thing. Okay, uh, because most of the youngsters and us youths, mm, mm. we rely more on newspapers yes, yes, or in uh, social media. Uh, TV, no? Uh, TV, social yeah. media, no? Yes. So, so, nothing is better than reading books. Yeah, nothing is better than that. Okay. So, thank you so much for the brief introduction. And uh, Okay, thank you so much friends and uh, okay, many a times like uh, because we have come to learn mm. and through you also, because last time when we approached you through phone call and when we asked you your mm. photo, mm. your picture, mm. you you were quite reluctant. Mm -hmm. You said that uh, you sometimes you get threatens from different organizations mm -hmm. on the these parties uh -huh. or so my first question is what is your message to those people to the, those people okay who threatens you or who calls you huh? for writing all these uh, anti-corruption articles uh, and uh, anti-corruption messages in the social media. What is your first see, message to the people? They call me a coward because I don't use my thing. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Uh, picture okay. uh, on my profile. No? Okay. And, and the funny thing is all these people who are calling me cowards all are commenting under false mm -hmm. uh, IDs. No? Uh, mm -hmm. So my location is not a secret. Hundreds of young people no, have inboxed me asking me, where do you live? We, I want to meet you. I always give them my address. I give them my phone number. Uh, I, they're always welcome. Okay. But I'll be stupid if I keep my picture on display all the time for every Tom, Dick and Harry to identify me anywhere on the road. No? Okay, uh, okay. I think you all know Crawler Baba. No? Mm -hmm. I came across a very funny post of his. Uh, Mm -hmm. Because he's also offended quite a lot of people on social media, no? Okay. So it seems he was uh, crossing the hiker side, no? And then one bolero with some young people, they saw him coming on a bike, no? Mm -hmm. And they laughed and they splashed him and ran. <laughs> 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 so things like that, no? Okay, <laughs> okay so... Anyway, uh, okay. So my message is, see, you want to do anything? Come here, do it. No? Mm -hmm. them, no? uh, mm -hmm. Because I've lived life. Mm -hmm. My experiences in life, no? I've lived life in many different ways, no? and I know if death is going to come, it is inevitable. Okay. When you can assassinate the President of the United States of America, who am I? Yeah? Okay. Uh, so, like, uh, so you want to do it, you do it, uh, don't threaten. Uh, don't threaten. Uh, it's like good or bad, you, know? you want to shoot, shoot, <laughs> <laughs> don't talk. Okay. No. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> That's that. Thank you, Thank you so much. Uh, okay. So mm. being an anti-corruption, mm. okay, anti-corruption mm. activist, mm. I think, uh, okay, so since uh, which year you started being uh, actively writing against these corruptions and uh, uh, misuse of powers by the authorities. See, to be frank, uh, I was a heroin addict, uh, give up heroin. I was, I went into alcoholism. And my my thought was, see, they are better educated people than me. They are more intelligent people than me. Mm -hmm. They are wiser people than me. Okay. So I was not bothered. No? Uh, society can take care of itself. Okay. The wrong by indigene indigeneity issue, Okay was what triggered me. Okay. Two years I kept re reading about this indigeneity, you know, one against uh, all. Nobody seemed to have a clue of what indigeneity meant. You know? uh -huh. So that is where, when I wrote my first piece, I sent it only to the Eastern Mirror <coughs> uh, about indigeneity and what it means. Yes, yes. Then after that slowly, you know, uh, I started writing uh, and then see, Corruption. You cannot slice and dice corruption. Mm -hmm. I wrote one recently, the blind nagas and the elephant of corruption. Yeah, I uh, uh. <laughs> So, that is what I mean. Mm -hmm. 
when you talk about corruption we have to tackle the whole mm -hmm. uh, body of corruption no you yes. cannot just stick to only a backdoor appointments or bad roads or electricity because all are have the same root mm -hmm. uh, so as long as you are tackling the branches uh, it will keep on growing it's happening in nagaland every day multiple issues arise yes. so get to the source understand the cause mm -hmm. only when you understand the cause can you tackle the problem yes. and the cause is the absence of the rule of law absence of the rule of law rule of law yes. and the cpn i don't know if you're going to ask later on yes, sir. but the cpn is a small we have a small tight group uh, all younger than me i've been encouraging them mm -hmm. and the purpose of the cpn is to establish the rule of law in nagaland and we are always willing to stand for anyone uh, who is facing injustice we don't uh, uh, publicize our thing what we do but many people have opposed us in many ways mm -hmm. and we have helped them uh, but our main when we started it was the rupin sharma case Uh, yes. DGP case, yes. and then uh, see we filed a case in the Supreme Court. It is still active. Active. Uh, yes. It's still active. Oh, sure. Now the thing is, uh, the Chief Justice gave a very funny decision. There were two aspects to the case. One was contempt okay. that the government of Nagaland has bypassed the Supreme Court judgment, okay. and the second part was the replacement of the current DGP, John Lungkum, because he is not eligible. So not, the, not eligible by uh, qualification. Oh, uh, by co his uh, thing. Uh, according to the rules set uh, by the rules Supreme Court. Okay. So very funny decision was given very hurriedly, mm -hmm. and uh, the decision was uh, since uh, the government of Nagaland has explained. So the content part, uh, they have think waived them. No? So there was no contempt on the part of the government of Nagaland. Mm -hmm. As to John Lugrubo continuing. he said that uh, government of nagaland should file an application sure. so we are waiting for the government of nagaland to file an application to see what reason they are going to give then uh, we got a reply just recently mm -hmm. uh, from the advocate representing the government of nagaland okay. saying that they have filed the application last year so we have written to the registrar uh, register general mm -hmm. of the supreme court to kindly set a date for the hearing of the application <laughs> So, if you win the case, if uh, CPN mm -hmm. wins the case, then uh, Rupin Sharma he will be again inducted. Ah, uh, theor uh, no, oh. theoretically yes. Theoretically, ah, uh, because now this we are entering new waters. Okay. The Supreme Court has stipulated that one must have reached thirty years in service. Okay. To be eligible to be a DGP, the problem in Nagaland is we don't have any IPS uh, officer. Of the Nagaland cadre, who has reached thirty years in service, and Mr. Rupin Chawla is the senior most. So I believe yes, he will be the next DG. Next, yeah. you believe? Yeah, I believe. So, uh, so if like not, a, then the okay. moment he reaches thirty years in service, uh, your CPN had organized uh, this uh, signature campaign. Yes, yes, yes. So how many signatures did you collect? Did you collect that? How many participated in the signature? I, uh, it was very thing, uh, very encouraging the signature campaign. Okay. Uh, I think we collected around. I'm not certain. Okay, sir. But a few uh, thousands, not thousands. Uh, I, not fifteen, uh, sixteen, or thirty. I forgot. <laughs> It's been okay, quite some time okay, now. Okay, no? okay. uh, anyway, that was very encouraging. It was okay. very good uh, for. Thank you, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, CPN, uh, Constant uh, People of Nagaland. Mm -hmm. In the same way, I think in the previous parcels past, mm -hmm. there were many uh, organizations, mm -hmm. many pressure groups. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They earned names. Mm -hmm. They got followers. Mm -hmm. They got fans. Okay. Mm -hmm. They were feared by the government also mm -hmm. many times. Mm -hmm. They shook the mm -hmm. town cities. Yes, yes, okay. Yes. By their name, people they shook. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, But uh, later on, they they all vanished away in thin air. Okay. See. After. What do you call it? After reaching a certain mm -hmm. limit, mm -hmm. they vanish. Mm -hmm. Why? Why is it so? And will see. There, you have to understand. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, yes, sir. There, are two different <coughs> schools of thought. No? Yes, sir. See, the European people, they believe in causes. Ah, yes, uh, Asian people, we believe in people. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, so the problem with nagas is mis belief in people. Mm-hmm. When uh, in the early days of the CPN, uh, uh, Bart Hamsui, you know, it yes, goes sir. by the name of Bart Hamsui, yes, uh, and Kevito, yes, then uh, Tropica, Kavi, uh, we were, and then uh, Bart was uh, sort of praising me. Mm-hmm. So I told him, see, Bart, never put the person above the cause. <clears throat> because no, nobody is indispensable. Mm-hmm. But if the cause is good, it will last. Okay. Ah. Okay. So like uh, CPN, you said... So the, the organizations you talk about, uh, they're leaders. No? Ah, the cause might have been good, no? but the leaders were faulty. And they thought that they are the cause. Okay. No? Ah. Okay. This is happening in Nagaland. Okay. See, Rio thinks he's the government. Okay. Uh, and some Angami people think that ah, the government belongs to the Angamis. This happened in the past. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm not blaming Rio or uh, the Angamis, no? but okay. this is the thing. Uh, in the past, it happened with thing during uh, Dr. S. G. M. S. time also. Okay. Somehow people, no, uh, they, they, uh, at Dr. S. G. M. also, he thought that he was uh, Supreme. Uh, invulnerable, immortal, uh, okay. uh, omnipotent. No, uh, okay, okay. But we are all human beings. No? Uh, okay. So, I don't take it very seriously actually, but when I look at the suffering of the people, then it really angers me. Mm-hmm. There's no other word for it, okay? I'm very driven by anger. Okay. Okay. I'm not affected personally. I'm contented, I'm content with what I have. Okay. But if I believe in Nagaland, if I believe in the Nagas, if I believe in the society, then everybody's concern is my concern. I cannot hope to enjoy life when others, are suff- others around me are suffering. Mm-hmm. Now, people talk about revolutions, no? Mm-hmm. Nagaland is a high time for revolution, but why? Why can't we think, go through a revolution? Mm-hmm. And why don't I speak about it? Because I know. I can instigate people to do things, but those people will suffer. It is not the Nagaland police. The Nagaland police too, I know, if a crisis really comes up where the public rises up and revolt, even the Nagaland police will join them. But then the state government is going to call the army, Indian army. And the Indian security forces, by default, they will have to suppress us. Because good or bad, these people have occupied the constitutional seats. They might have occupied it through bribes or through buying votes, no? Mm-hmm. But they are there. We cannot avoid that fact, no? So the government of India will have to listen to the people in the offices. Mm-hmm. Later on, changes may come, no? But initially, and in that process, people are going to die. Mm-hmm. You've seen uh, past examples. Yes. Uh, two, three are all innocent people have died. Young people. Mm-hmm. People are instating young people for selfish reasons. And those people, young people, they, they are the ones dying. I don't want something like that to happen. That's mm-hmm. why I want to establish the rule of law. When you have the law, a law you can depend on, then you will not have to depend on your family, your village, your clan, your tribe. Familial feelings will always exist. Uh, yes, sir. Real, tribal feelings will always exist, but it will not be paramount. Okay. I think that's uh, <laughs> very much clear. Mm. Okay, sir. Okay, then the okay, which means like according to you, concerned people of Nagaland, mm. it's not confined with one cause. No, no, no. It is justice. No, mm. see, we have help people who are facing even small things like summons. Yeah. Yeah, we uh, have that also in our questions. Uh, yeah, yeah. Even small things like summons. Uh, okay. Uh, when we, uh, small things like uh, people commenting on uh, social media and being summoned by the police. Uh, okay. Just recently, I accompanied one young Angani boy to the East Police Station. Okay, just for? 
because he commented that uh, the ambulances purchased by the governor of Nagaland were second hand. <laughs> <laughs> because of that comment. Uh, yeah, because of that comment he was summoned by the thing, uh, okay. police and I accompanied him. Okay. I wanted to know exactly what, what wrong he had committed. I wanted to know who had filed the case against him. Okay. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, so who had filed that case? Uh, no one. <laughs> Just a phone call. <laughs> okay. But okay. see, the thing is, we should not blame the policeman on the street or in the thanas. Okay. The orders are coming from above. Okay, uh, okay. Money, and, which means like uh, someone is monitoring. Yeah. So there's no point fighting with them. No. Uh, it's like. Uh, you come to a minister's house no, and the guard does not let you in. No, you fight with the guard. No, it is the minister who is given the order. No, order, order. Fight not the to minister. let anyone. Yeah, I just fight, so fight with the minister. That is what I want to think. Okay. What's the point in fighting with the policeman no, on the street or in the thanas? No? Yes, ah. yes. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Then the, mm. the one, the, our third question is mm. how can a concerned citizen stand against corruption? Mm. How? See, this is the biggest problem. Mm -hmm. India has the best constitution in the world. It has the best set of laws. But you cannot have all the laws in the world. It, it does not help you in any way if they are not enforced. Now, this, the lack of enforcement of the laws of India is what is causing all these problems. Not in India alone. I mean, not in Ireland alone, but across India. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to show the Naga people that we have to take recourse to the courts of law. Okay. But then it is expensive and it is very slow. That is why I am hoping that somebody, some of these uh, underground factions uh, will reveal their solution. Okay. Uh, what they are, what solution they are searching for, so that I might give my suggestion uh, of a strong independent judiciary for Nagaland. See, anywhere in the world, a government will always tend to oppress the people. Okay. It is the judiciary which stands guard. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have a weak judiciary, no, then the executive will do what it wants. Okay. Uh, exit means the government yes, people yes. running. So, and the problem with parliamentary democracy is that the legislator and the executive are the same. Mm. Yeah. So when you have a country like Great Britain, where the people are aware, uh, where their MPs no, uh, are aware, then that does not cause a problem. But in India, where you have where the people are not aware, then the executive they can do anything they want. And if, it, if there's something they cannot do, they can pass laws that they want. Mm -hmm. So it is for the judiciary to interpret the laws. Okay. But we have seen the successive uh, emasculation of the Indian ju judicial system. So seeing that, I want Nagaland to have a strong judiciary. Because that is the only recourse for us. We cannot go on strike every time. No, We cannot go uh, Seriously. Uh, destroying public property every time that our rights are violated. No? Uh. Which means, like according to you, mm. uh, we have a very weak judiciary. Yes, India. India. Mm. Yes. India. Not only now. Yeah, yeah. Because we are under the Indian judiciary system. Okay. So, like a change in judiciary is very important. Mm. So, at least, so if the solution we can, now at least in the low levels, no. Oh, okay, level. Supreme Court will be there, but at least in the low levels, if we can get favorable judgments. Okay. Uh, if we can ensure the position. Uh, the promotion of the judges mm -hmm. from the influence of the executive, then they will give think, proper judgments. Okay, in context, Nagaland. Mm. Nagaland, what is the root cause of uh, corruption in Nagaland, according to you? The in cause Nagaland. is ignorance. Yes. Ignorance. Ignorance. Yes. Ignorance by the uh, general public uh, and the exploitation of the educated people. Exploitation by uh, the, the educated, educated people are the cause of the corruption in Nagaland. Why? How? Uh, by omission and by commission. Now, you have educated people entering the government service. Mm -hmm. These people are indulging in corruption. Mm -hmm. Aren't they supposed to be the best of the educated? Yeah, that's true. Uh, 
So why are they doing this? Why are they allowing one stupid guy who managed to buy some votes mm -hmm. to order him around? Sure. He's going to be in service for 30 years. Mm -hmm. This politician will be there uh, for five years maybe. Uh, mm -hmm. He may lose the next election. A different party may come. The the duty of the bureaucracy is to tell the ministers what they can do and what they cannot do. Mm -hmm. Because these ministers, they know nothing. So they will say, I you do this. Then the head of the department or the secretaries or the chief secretary, so this is not possible. It's against the law. But they go around uh, finding loopholes. And they break the law. Now, the second half is when election time comes, we don't go to the villages telling them of what they are being deprived of. Mm -hmm. Okay. You give me an example of any state, nation, society in the history of the world which enjoys the benefits that Nagaland enjoys. No one does. We don't pay income tax. Everything is given to us free. We get rice, we get dal, we get cooking oil. Huh? Our children are sent to school for free. They're given uniforms. Only underpants and socks. Ah, even socks they give. Uh, only underpants we have to buy. Mm -hmm. They're given books. Uh, they're given school bags. Midday uh, meal. A midday meal. <coughs> Hospitals. Medicine. Everything is free. Supposed to be free. Free. Mm -hmm. No, and look at all the different uh, development projects. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and MGNRG mm -hmm. that is very important for the villagers. Yes, sir. Uh, is they never get in, get it in full. The village LP schools don't uh, function properly. Mm -hmm. So, even an ordinary villager has to send his wife and children to the towns to get a good education. Every time he gets a small headache, he has to go to the town uh, because the primary health center is not functioning. Not functioning. Mm. And even in the town, uh, the district hospital uh, barely gets by, so he has to go to the private hospital. This is how the economy is destroyed. So this is where we have to educate people. Okay. That's why I supported Akavi last election. Party. No, I, I, I'm not a member of the Amadme party. Uh, they came here. They asked me to join. I refused. I said, but I will support. And when Aki, uh, Akavi decided to things, then I went around with him. I don't know who Akavi is. I, of course, now I know him. Uh, and at the end, again, uh, we had a difference of uh, thing, opinion, and I left Akavi towards the end of the campaign. But anyway, what I mean is, see, we talk about clean election. Mm -hmm. I have been a consistent thing, uh, opponent of this clean election concept huh? because this is just another dirty trick uh, for the politicians to get power without paying money. When you don't have clean candidates, what is the purpose of a clean election? Yep. I have written in newspapers no, saying that I asked the NBCC, if we promise not to take money, can you promise that these people will not be corrupt? What we need are clean candidates. But the environment makes it impossible for clean candidates to come up. It was, I think, 2018 December. In December, there, there was a seminar held at uh, Don Bosco. Okay. So I was invited there. Not as a speaker. Uh, but then I stood up and spoke. I said, see, there's no point talking about clean elections now. Hmm. Because there's no time left and then whether you, if you take money, you're damned. If you don't take money, you're damned. Because if you don't take money again, they will not believe that you have voted for them. So I said, don't ask for, go, all of us should go back to our villages, to our colony, to our wards, town, wherever we stay. Spread the word to our villages, to our neighbors. Don't ask for money. If you're given money, you take the money. Otherwise, your vote will go to waste. But you always vote for the new person. 
It will not work at one time, but after two, three elections, the old candidate will understand that there is no point wasting money because he's not going to win. Mm -hmm. And that will create the environment for honest candidates to enter the fray. Mm -hmm. Nagalan, okay, normally we have a like a, say a tradition uh -huh. or a culture like election. If you have to contest election, that means you need huge amount of money. See, what starts we this is what I mean. We affect each other. Yes, sir. To my knowledge, the Sumis were the only ones earlier in the past. The Sumis it started in the Sumi areas, both for cash. And that is why Sumi elections are usually very peaceful, okay? We have no trouble. Huh? <laughs> I've sold my vote finish. <laughs> we don't go fighting. Huh? Of course, the uh, last election, the Abuto, there was a very okay. ugly incident. Uh, okay. People died, uh, but that is uh, the exception to the rule. Now, this started spreading. It was uh, Sumi's and uh, Aos, uh, Lothas, no, very anything, no? So, this money for votes, no? Uh, started. Of course, I was born and brought up in Wuxing. I've seen, I was contesting elections, no? It was very nice. Uh, candidate will open a camp, uh, uh -huh. then uh, all the youth can come, eat what they want, uh, drink how much they want, and then maybe pocket money, no? Uh, uh -huh. 40, 50 bucks. There Those was no expectation, uh, uh, 70s and... 70s. Uh, uh, yeah. Even uh, during the 80s. Uh. Okay. And only on the... Uh, Election day, if you think, put proxy votes, then you may get a certain amount for every proxy vote. No? But there was no organized buying. No, Sumis too were very organized. Huh? Okay. Uh, every family will get a certain amount. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then after that amount, that is like booking the family. Then uh, <laughs> for every vote, no? uh, okay. <laughs> you'll yeah, be paid a certain amount. No? Okay. So this has started. And Angamis were very honest mm -hmm. on this. Thing, election day. But they have also started within the last five or six, uh, uh, in last two or three elections, they have started giving money for votes. Oh, what about uh, uh, promising of jobs and contracts? Mm. Mm. See, this exchange, jobs and contracts, no? the question is anywhere in the world, no? influence matters, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's jobs or contracts. But it, in other places, People with qualifications, mm -hmm. now, uh, say a number of you are applying for a job. Mm -hmm. Now, the opportunity is given to everyone to apply for the job, no? and everyone has the necessary qualifications. Mm -hmm. Then the question of influence arises. But in Nagaland, uh, we want the jobs without applying for it, without having the qualifications for it. Mm -hmm. That is where the problem arises. So, this practice is actually an offshoot of the time when Naga did not have educated people. Mm -hmm. See, you see the early chief secretaries and all, uh, they were teachers. And then the moment Nagaland got statehood, uh, they were they being inducted into the civil services. You know? mm -hmm. And then there was a shortage of educated people. So, if you graduated in the 70s, you were guaranteed a thing, class one gazette post. And this has led to the trend, the Naga mentality that if I graduate, I'm entitled to it. No. But this is no longer the case. Mm -hmm. Now there's so many things, graduates, no? so many qualified people. So it is time we gave up this practice. But it's very difficult to change a system. So all this comes into play. No? No. Our lack of understanding of how a society works, how a government works. No. What are our duties? What are our rights? Okay, so like, uh, see, so now you have mentioned that the practice, mm. the uh, people have been practicing all these uh, corruptions. Mm. I mean, mm. okay, so like, uh, again, at the same time, these same people, they want changes. Mm. They want changes in the system. Oh, see, the thing is, so how, how will, <laughs> How can you? Yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, see, we want changes to the system, mm -hmm. but only in cases where I face injustice. Okay. Yeah, okay. Where I am taking advantage of the system, though, I don't want to change yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> that's the uh, So that is where this uh, 
your moral uh, what do you call it uh, your moral right no uh, mm-hmm. you lose that no uh, when you take up selective issues <laughs> so like uh, changes to lage will be need to change no yes and they fight only for like changes in some certain causes uh, yeah, where yeah, they want uh, where, where uh, they generally uh, changes yeah, yeah, like. yeah, yes, yeah. so what's your message to those people uh, key message what is your message at the moment it is no uh, it is very obvious what you're doing no uh, mm-hmm. you may fool some of the people mm-hmm. but you don't fool me no mm-hmm. so again the uh, at first uh, you have said that uh, uh, corruption uh, uh, uh kya bolte the sole responsible for the corruption mm. that is prevailing mm. in the state is because of the mm. educated yes the learned people yes they know they the, yeah. they do nothing they uh, do nothing uh, they are either too scared or, or they, they are taking advantage uh, of corruption the changes would dig the red no no it's possible change will come change will come yes i have a specific thing game plan <laughs> okay Okay, so we'll come to that after sometime. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay. Anyway, okay, you have mentioned. Okay, mm. I have not. Uh, okay, okay, that is like a okay, institutionalized corruption. Yes. Uh huh. And uh, <coughs> many Nagas are fighting against mm. institutionalized uh, mm. corruption mm. in many front. Exactly. What do you mean by this? See, institutional co- corruption. When. something becomes institutionalized that means it becomes a way of life we accept it no? okay see corruption exists everywhere in the world okay but everywhere else in the world mm-hmm. the corrupt people they hide the corruption they hide the fruits of the corruption but in nagaland we flaunt it no ah uh, mm-hmm. we build, buy thousands of acres of land uh, we build Uh, mansions no uh, we move around in luxury vehicles no you cannot do that in uh, any other place in the world because the income tax is going to come asking you well, how did you manage to buy it uh-huh. i this is too much no the level of flaunting no uh-huh. and we have become such a perverted society uh-huh. that a, a young i especially feel for the young people see uh school and college going Mm. Mm-hmm. Men and women, I, the children of the honest people, no, they are the ones who are embarrassed because they cannot afford uh, good phones, they cannot afford good clothes, they cannot come in vehicles, no. Where are the thieves? The children of thieves, no, they are coming and they are. Thing. It should be the other way around, no. In a normal society, a thief and his children are the ones who should be ashamed. Mm-hmm. How is it? that the thieves and the children are the ones who are uh, going strutting around what sort of society is this this is worse than solomon gomorrah eh? yeah so uh, and people they are used to corruption yes nagaland we are running on corruption eh? and the reason why we don't care is because we are not paying for it india is paying for it they are stealing what india is giving us but we don't know that is being stolen from us in the first place now india is giving us money it has not reached us it disappears halfway and we are not aware that it's being stolen from us and these people these thieves are going are roaming around the world uh, enjoying all the luxuries i am not jealous but i feel for people society can i feel for this uh, thing young people i was surprised when uh, the amount of people who are uh, thing who applied to return no I never uh, knew that there were so many Nagas working outside Nagaland. Mm-hmm. There's no need for that. Are you, why talk about building industries and all that? 
No. You give the thing, villager, his due. Or he will plant thing, cash crops. His children will not have to go searching for work outside Nagaland. But I more than ninety percent of Nagaland is uh, thing hills. Our villages are scrabbling for a living, no. So the children have to go searching for livelihood outside Nagaland. You see all the projects that India has thing initiated. Not one of them has been implemented. I think Kohli's interview, she was talking about the fisheries, no? <laughs> <laughs> no? How many yeah. fisheries? Uh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, language should be a fishery. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this ST Apong Lungkumar, I think. Uh, he's, he gave the list of the pigries also. Uh, and the hostels. I was surprised. There should be a hostel in every corner of Nagaland, yeah? The tribal hostel. And the funny thing is, Ari RCM, he has built three crores he has taken to build a hostel in his private school. So was that for his private use or for tribal thing? People. See these hostels are meant for those who come from the outskirts to thing, have a thing, a cheap accommodation. It is not for them to use it for their own purposes. In between, mm. when the phone is coming from the center, mm. so who who takes it away? I mean, how they manage to? They in connivance with the village. See, this uh, village authorities, uh, district authorities. So uh. Milawa. Yeah, yes, uh, because uh, completion report you have to give, no? Mm -hmm. Even on paper. Completion. Uh, yeah, completion that is being completed. Uh. So many uh, normally, like everyone, they are agreeing. To. Huh? They agree with the corruption. No, because the village is not aware of his rights. See, I, are you going to discuss customary law? Yes, we have one. Then. Because, see, the thing is, our villages, yes, sir. we are being ruled by the village council. Yes, and then, Naga customary law, it is a set of primitive laws for primitive people. Mm -hmm. uh, the laws of inheritance, that is okay. Uh, acceptable, land usage is acceptable, but criminal laws and then governmental funds, no, there's nothing to do with Naga customary laws. But we, everything, we bring everything under customary law so that we can do what we want. Now, mm -hmm. say, okay, you tell me which customary law says that if you contest for election, you'll be kicked off from the village, no, or if you don't support a particular candidate that you'll be kicked off from the village, you tell me. Are you? I heard just yesterday that there's a village in Kifli. I'm wondering what is wrong with Nagaland, the government of Nagaland. 20 or 30 families, they were kicked out from the village. Just because? Uh, all of this election thing. Election. Mm. See, we, it is no point talking about change when you cannot even change the system within your village or within your tribe. See, I will tell you the last real law that was passed by the Nagaland Assembly was the Nagaland Village and Area Council Act, 1978. You know what it says? See, I, will, I, I wanted to bring this up because this is very important. It is very important that all Nagas know exactly what their rights are. Now, it states because I don't want to be misquoted, no? That's why I think. Okay, uh, see. The village council cons constituted under the law in force from time to time shall administer justice within the village limits. Uh, you understand that, okay? It does not mean all the village land. Uh, mm -hmm. it, that is debatable. Within the village limit, that is a populated area, in accordance with the customary law, okay? Mm -hmm. and usages as accepted by the canons of justice established in Nagaland. So it does, what it means is customary law as accepted by the canons of justice, by the rules of justice established in Nagaland. What that means is 
Your customary law cannot supersede the Indian Penal Code, mm -hmm. IPC. That is the canon, that is the rule of justice across Nagaland. But, mm. okay. but we say that our laws are superior. superior. So and we make up the laws. They, they did it because they know that Naga customary law does not cover certain topics. Well, not certain, vast majority of the law. Now, the customer laws are very basic. We have people getting away with murder. How do I kill someone, I pay a fine. I rape someone, I pay a fine. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, sorry. I'm your, your uh, mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I think we'll go to the next question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So you were uh, urging, appealing the people mm. uh, to support the governor mm. to apply the Article 371 yes, yes. Mm -hmm. A, A 1B. B. Mm. B. Yes, yes. Why is it? Uh, can you, you have written clearly. This. Yes, yes. You have mentioned clearly, uh -huh. but uh, Mokuli, can you please? See, why? when you have a bunch of school kids, no, uh, mm -hmm. running around, mm -hmm. playing dirty with the laws of the land. Uh, Somebody must step in. Why do you think uh, this insurgency is being fueled? It is not nationalism. The days when the Naga thing, nationalism was being fueled by nationalistic you think is gone. There may be one or two people in all the factions who believe in uh, nationalism. The rest of them are all there for economic purposes. And you can't blame them. I've said that, I've written in print also. When people who owe their positions to the law, break the law, how can you expect those who operate outside the law to obey the law? Are you talk about extortion of the underground groups in the shops and things? What about the extortion of the government servants? They are using the pens to extort in the offices. They are taking the vast thing, share of the money. They have frustrated you. They have got no option. They have got no contacts. They cannot get jobs. They cannot get contracts. So naturally they will join the underground groups. And the reason why I was so concerned about those stranded people who are working outside India, these are the people who really believe in earning their own living. And these are the people we wanted to abandon. Because here you are either in a government job or you are in the underground. Those people at least, they took the decision to go outside. You think a person leave, willingly leaves his home no. to work under strangers in strange lands with strange customs? They are forced to. Hari Indias, I've said it time and again during uh, Mr. Uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee's uh, second term, one more thing he spoke in parliament saying that for every man, woman and child in Nagaland, the central government is giving 6,000 rupees per month. Mm -hmm. So for a family of five, you're getting 20,000 rupees per month. That is if you put in cash terms. Where does it go? You can see where it goes. Look at the houses of our ministers, our bureaucrats. Look at the things they own. It's so funny. They don't even know the value of the things they own. No? And they own it just because they have to have it. Because rich people are supposed to have things like this. No? It was so funny, a few years back I went to one guy's house. Ah, he had a lot of dogs, huh? nice, nice ones. Huh? They were German shepherds. Huh? Mm -hmm. uh, I saw uh, the Doberman, uh, then Dalmatian. No? Now Dalmatian too, everybody knows, white with mm -hmm. things. So I said, ah, the nice Dalmatian. No? And I said, no, no, that's an Alsatian. <laughs> 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 He don't. <laughs> 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 yeah, see, uh, what do you keep it just because yeah, they're supposed to have it, no? Okay. Uh. So like uh, 371 mm -hmm. A, 1B. Mm -hmm. Okay, if it's been applied, kuch kar sakega, kuch changes. Yes, because be now the thing is implementation of the law. Mm -hmm. No. And now the implementation of the law at the district level lies with the thing, DC and the SP. Mm -hmm. Now these 
this is an SPS they are completely at the mercy of the ministers. They are not allowed to function. Now, if the governor has a direct hand in that, he can ensure the support and the protection of his office. Okay. And see, it is a, in a way, it's a very dangerous law okay. because that gives the governor really think big powers. Okay. But Mr. Arun Ravi, see, I will tell you frankly, uh, when he was first appointed, I took no notice. I thought, ah, same as that uh, other guy, you know, that uh, Padmana Bahia. Uh, mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, my friend Robert Solo, he asked me once if I wanted to be introduced. And I said, no, 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 I don't need to meet these people. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Pointless. Mm -hmm. Then after he was appointed the governor, uh, this uh, Sinti Kichu, Sinti Pokla Jamai, you know, I think he, uh, she goes by that name. You know? She shared the links of the articles he had written. In 2012. When I read those, I was surprised. No? Then I understood that this is a man of integrity. So I am comfortable with him uh, using that clause of the article. Because I believe that he is a man, honest man, principled man, mm -hmm. and a man of integrity. You are sure? Yeah, I believe because see when you are willing to put your neck on the line against the common point of view uh, I will send you the link later on okay you all can that was written in 2012 he gave the analysis of the talks between things now this uh, I am supporters they are using his article they are cherry picking his article uh, his one of his articles had the heading uh, uh, and I think we have a hoax you read that, you'll understand okay. that the Panwana Bhai and I am, no, they were fooling the Naga people. Okay. The previous interlocutor. Yes, yes. Okay. He has given everything. <coughs> and that was after he had retired. He was not after a governor post or anything like, uh, or a MP post. No, uh, no. He, he was not seeking post retirement benefits because he was bucking the establishment. And I believe, see, I don't like the BJP, you know, but I believe that if we Nagas use this opportunity, then uh, what the BJP has done by appointing him as the interlocutor and also uh, the governor, that the BJP has done a good job on this issue. But you don't support BJP? No, no. Because, see, I have said it before, I say it again. There are only two real political parties in India. And what is a political party? A political party is based on ideology. So you have the BJP, which has a very dangerous ideology, and you have the Communist Party of India. The rest are all based on personalities, no? Huh? Yeah, Mulayam Singh Yadav. No? Okay, ah, according to you, the, uh, CPIM and the, the BJP are the most dangerous political No, 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 not dangerous only real political parties real political because they have uh, ideology uh, and the BJP ideology is dangerous that's what I'm saying okay. and the, the CPI ideology do we all know communist ideology what it is no? uh, so okay, let's not go towards mm -hmm. that those things okay mm -hmm. those things okay uh, let's come back to your post your article on the recent article <coughs> uh, that was like uh, yeah, you had uh, filed in a petition mm -hmm. To the commissioner of the Yes, 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 yes. Police, yes, I, yes, I guess. Yes, yes. Uh, For reporting, uh, the, uh, there was yeah. a mm. illegal organization mm. 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 Yes, yes. Uh, uh. hovering yeah, in the yeah, town, yeah. Mm -hmm. checking up good arms. Mm -hmm. so, yes, yes. So, yeah. who, who are those illegally? Uh, the DNSU, the Mount Nagasun student. And see, this is not a new issue. Okay. See, I wrote a previous article of mine. It, was, it came out in papers against the Naga Ho and the NSF. They might summon you. Well, why didn't they summon me? It's been two years now. I'm waiting. Summon me if they have the guts. <coughs> okay. I wrote in the newspapers about these two organization, uh, organizations. I call them malafide organizations. Mm -hmm. Illegal organizations. And I gave the reasons why. It's come out in print. I will post on social media. But nobody took notice. Mm -hmm. Now, this NSF has come and set up the DNSU. How is that possible? 
Or DNSU means Dimapur Naga Students Union. It is supposed to be set up by the students of Dimapur. How can the NSF come and set up? Uh, yes, sir. So you need to have NSF, right? Huh? No, no, no. You see, that's why. When you talk about a fed federal structure, mm -hmm. see, federating units set up the federation. A federation does not come back down and set up a federating unit. Yeah. Mm, that is one issue. And I wrote against that, against the DNSU at the time it was formed. But that was only on like, social media, Facebook. Now, okay, no one took notice. I see. I have written on all these issues. Huh? I've, Facebook to uh, countless issues I've written on. Newspapers, 125 articles I've written. So far. Mm, so far. And I've touched nearly every aspect of corruption in Nagaland. <coughs> Governmental, social, and underground. Even the church also. We are coming uh, to church. Yes. So all these issues have been there. The NSU to I wrote. And then since no one voted, I kept quiet. But then I saw the arrogance no? uh, that they exhibited. No? See, they were going around seizing gutka, drinking. See, I don't eat gutka, I don't drink, it does not affect me. Mm -hmm. But what they are doing is illegal. And nobody seems to notice that. How can one organization take up a policing role? And when you look at them, I asked the commercial police, uh, please inquire what education institutions they are thing. Enroll them. Because if you pretend to be a thing, student leader, you have to be enrolled in an education institution. And by that thing, uh, count, even NSF also is a thing. These people are committing fraud. It's actionable. So this is what I brought to the notice of the commissioner police. There's a procedure. I wanted to go straight to the court. But then I understood that there's a procedure. Huh. So I'm, I'm waiting. I have to give a suitable amount of time. No? It's not that as if I write today and then if there's no action taken tomorrow, then uh, I'll go to the court. No? I'll give them a suitable amount of time. And then let's see whether any action is taken. And then I'll take the next step. No, banning of, uh, checking of uh, good car or... I think they are helping the... No, no, no. They, they, they are not empowered to... They can report. See, you learn the difference. Even the, even when a uniformed policeman cannot enter my house without a warrant. No. Who are these dirty people uh, to go around entering shops, seizing think, goods? What law gives them that right? You tell me. What law gives them the right to destroy property? Even the police cannot do that. That is only for the courts to decide. The court will decide. The court can say that, oh, see, this alcohol is worth this much, so let us auction it. They can auction it, auction it in the sand. Or the court can say, destroy it. Even the bloody chief secretary cannot say, destroy it. See, you have to understand how the thing, judicial processes work. You cannot have every Tom, Dick and Harry organization uh, running around, checking whatever they want. I, there are so many instances where I've... I went to visit my niece, I think, two years back. And she was saying, I, I feel so sorry for the shopkeeper. I said, what happened? Our group of people came in a car and seized all the cigarettes and went away. See, this is what's going to happen. Now this Kohima LPG Dealers Union, no? See, they are going on a bond and I support them. Because now suddenly people are coming. Uh, I don't know whether they're using their underground, whatever. I think, have you paid your taxes and then seizing the driver and helpers? Uh, cell phones so when you have people running riot uh, breaking the law under the noses uh, under the uh, protection of the district administration how can you blame all these thieves from doing what they are doing you tell me where, where should the line be drawn there is no difference yeah, they, they have only the right to report yeah they are to report Report. Yes. Re report who? Yes. Oh, whoever is carrying out illegal activities. Mm -hmm. Report to the police. Yeah. That is the right, uh, that is the duty of every citizen. Every citizen. But nobody has the right to seize or confiscate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they have to report and the police will think. Seize or confiscate and then send it to the courts. Then the courts will decide what to do with it. That is how the law works. Mm -hmm.
Yeah, Nagal, yeah, all these Kushi Kushi village councils, uh, all ward council, colony council, the student union, auto union. Are you auto union also? The president is an auto driver. All Nagaland taxi drivers union is the president a taxi driver. See, all these are illegal when you come to the true sense of the thing, no? Uh, the, it is mandatory that one should be from yes, the same profession. Yes. Because there is misrepresentation. It is mandatory. Uh, it is mandatory. When you profess to be something, you have to be that thing. Get my point? Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, I can dress up as a policeman and walk around. But we function everything in Nagaland is illegal, no? So we are so used to it, we don't even bother. My a cousin of mine came to visit me soon after I wrote this. Are our student leaders supposed to be students? <laughs> See? Is that even a question? But I don't blame him for asking that question. Okay. You're supposed to be a student. Or at least recently thing. Depending on the constitution of that organization. Huh? You look at the Biharis, these people, they know how to do it. Huh? I, I, am, I, I, I was acquainted with one. Uh, three PhDs. Huh? Okay. <laughs> 15 years he to do. <laughs> so, he was enrolled. No, uh, I don't know whether he was actively pursuing the thing or not. No? Uh. Mm-hmm. Okay, sir. Uh, many a times, I think mm. one of your posts, we have found that uh, some of your friends, mm. They've uh, since long back. They've been filing RTI and PIL uh-huh. against uh, mm. various scams yeah. or departments. Mm. So, <coughs> but uh, we hardly get their final reports. See, Why? I I will not comment on the exact thing, huh, but filing a case on RTI also it depends on the issues you raise in the case. No, okay. you have to be very careful. Mm-hmm. Just because there's the appearance of wrongdoing, no? uh, wrongdoing does not mean that we can prove it in the court of law. So, uh, I will not comment on that. Uh, uh-huh. What I am saying is, see, the US government itself, the US government itself, they could do nothing against Al Capone. Okay, in the 1930s. At the end, they got him on tax evasion. Mm. They could do nothing against all the murders he had committed, all the bootlegging, all the prostitution, all the gambling he was doing. They caught him on tax evasion. So, see, it's a very different thing. No? What we see, uh, what the investiga- uh, in- investigative agencies do and what the courts decide. No? So, we have to be very careful of the parts we take. So, like... Uh you don't have any exact response for this? I mean, yeah, because from... I need to see the details. Now see, uh, I think uh, Mr. Robert Solo, uh, Mr. Nikiti Ralu, KSA and all, they have filed that uh, PIL. Mm-hmm. Uh, see, I was with them from the beginning and then there are multiple issues on this PPE scam. Mm-hmm. There are multiple issues. Mm-hmm. So, so I went through the, that also and then I told them you stick to one issue, one single issue. Okay, mm-hmm. but they were not willing to do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, this uh, technical specification of the PP suits. Now, I said, see, when you go into technicalities, there's a never ending thing. Because these people will bring experts, uh, then you will have to bring experts, then they will talk. Uh. Mm-hmm. So you stick to only one, but uh, anyway, that is their decision. Uh, they are doing the thing, the hard work, so why should I think? Uh, I, I'm okay. still. 100% behind the thing. Okay. Uh, so, see, the approach also, not because they have got the money mm-hmm. and it does not cost them anything. Mm-hmm. The Advocate General of Government of Nagaland or either at the High Court or Supreme Court, they're doing it now, whereas we have to pay our lawyers. Fortunately, that uh, I forgot the lady's name, that Angami lady, you know, uh, she's doing it for free. Free of course. Uh, but, see, they can take years and years, no? So, maybe, maybe that's why we don't hear of the, any conclusion no, to any of these uh, cases. Okay. So, like uh, being an anti-corruption activist, mm. and uh, like, uh, it's. Uh, I have one question for you. Mm, yeah. That is like uh, according to you, uh. 
Which depart department is the most corrupted one? Your uh, for me it is education followed by uh, health and family welfare, mm -hmm. RD, uh, and the rest uh, in balance. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, all same, except those which don't have any two, two. money. Uh. Okay. So uh, education and uh, healthcare, uh, uh, health and family welfare. These no. are the most corrupt departments. Educated people are the most corrupted. No, education department and no, I believe. Uh, but education and education. Oh, no, no. The question was which? Yeah, which departments? Yeah, those two departments. <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm sticking my neck out. Uh, but when you think no, uh, sure. of what is being pumped into the education sector, what is mm. being pumped into the RD and uh, thing, health sector. Mm -hmm. See, look, uh, thing, uh, uh, Mr. Himato Jimumi, IFS. Okay. See, he was the health secretary last year. And he released the list of, I think, five or six medicines which we are supposed to get free mm -hmm. from every district hospital. <laughs> Soon he was kicked out, not from the department. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we uh, know, everybody uh, knows. Uh, yeah, so. The, <laughs> way they're not is. willing to. See, now look at the decision of the government of Nagaland that now they, they will be no free quarantine, that they will think we will have to pay for tests also. Mm -hmm. Are what do they plan to do with all the money that uh, the center has given? Uh, what what do they plan to do with the COVID cess thing? Money? Very valid question, but uh, <laughs> who will raise the voice? Uh, see, this is why I'm saying all the organizations, including our tribal organizations, mm -hmm. all are just thing. They are not there to fight for our voices, but to divert our voices. Mm -hmm. I learned that during the Rupin Sharma thing, campaign. See, when you think of it, Mr. Rupin Sharma he is, he has directly given benefits to every Naga policeman across Nagaland. Now, every tribe in Nagaland uh, has members in the Nagaland police. So, this is all the tribal organizations should have stood behind him. That's when I realized, oh, these are all. Uh, useless organizations. I'm, I'm, I'll be writing one on these organization associations. No? Then you see. Uh, look at the NPO, ENPO, what they have done. Uh, so we have that question, sir. Uh, hmm? Yeah, please. Uh, to continue. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, see, uh, not ENP alone, okay? You don't blame ENP alone. Because the moment this COVID thing, uh, all these tribal of the APO, CPO, then uh, Ausenden, uh, uh, they wrote. Chagasan also, no? they wrote uh, saying that please don't come back to the own people. No? Is that how a tribal organization works? Then this ENP also, look at what they're doing now. Did they, who did they consult? Okay, now they have six units. Okay, and the six units, who did they consult to come to the decision? This does not come under customary laws. So this any decision like this should be taken but in a general body. It should be open for the people to voice their opinions. Mm -hmm. I've been telling people eh, in Nagaland there's another tribe. It's called the tribe of the corrupt. And it is we have members from all our tribes in the tribe of corrupt. Tribe of corrupt. Yes. It's a fact. They have got a very good network among them. Okay. Mm. Here they are saying, ah, no, we should not let Angamis do that. Ah, ah, we should not let Simis do that. Ah, we should not let Aus do that. There too, they are, everything is rising. Ah. A very well functioning thing, huh? Try it. Right. It's a fact. Fact. And we stupid people, not commenting and saying, ah, Angamis should not do that. Simis should not do that. Ah, Aus should not do that. Lothas. Ah, I don't know how stupid we are. Yeah. I am surprised, yeah, the level of stupidity. Uh, just because one Simi is an officer, uh, does, it, does it mean that all Simis are thing, benefiting? Just because Vio is the CM, does it mean all Angamis are benefiting? Only one or two of them are benefiting, the rest are suffering like us. Now we should not think, fall for the trap of tribalism. Yeah, my next question is, uh, this is my next question. Uh, oh, tribalism. How do you eradicate tribalism in Nagaland? See, 
these feelings, <coughs> this is not something which things which you can eradicate. Okay, love for the family, love for your villages, love for your clan, love for your tribe. You cannot eradicate that. Okay, but but you have to make sure that people do not take advantage of that to further their own personal benefits. Understand? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. very true. Because right now also in the US you have the Ku, Ku Klux Klan, uh, although it's supposed to be underground, you have the blacks hitting whites, whites hitting blacks, no. And these things will be there. But when you have the rule of law, say European countries, see, European countries do, they have established the rule of law for, from a long time back. No, tribalism in a sense like that's uh, nepotism. Uh, that's what I mean. Uh, mm -hmm. We should not let, no. Mm -hmm. See, uh, I really appreciate the Lothas, okay? During Kiazi Lang's term, when uh, Patton was giving all these uh, backdoor appointments and people were fighting, uh, Lothas against him were very vocal, okay? Those supporting him also were very vocal, but other tribes too, not that much, okay? So, in that sense, we have to appreciate the Lothas. So, that is how we fight tribalism. Now, we should not let the people who are using tribalism to further their selfish ends, get away with it. We have to expose the lie behind tribalism that is benefiting only some of them. Because when, say, a Sumi benefits from and other people are commenting against it, and I remain silent, the impression is giving that all the Sumis are benefiting from it. But when I speak out, then people also understand, okay, not all Sumis are benefiting. So this tribalism is false. <laughs> you cannot eradicate it. You have to show that you sh we should not allow it to be used <laughs> by people. It's very true. Okay. You have mentioned one that uh, Magalin is the heaven of corruption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? <laughs> What more, what more evidence can I give you then? No, no, why, yeah. why particularly the word heaven? Yeah, this heaven, yeah, this Lucifer's uh, hell on earth. For certain, it should be like heaven for the corrupted people. No, 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 it's... Not, not everyone are corrupted. No, no, it's not everyone. Mm -hmm. But the corrupt are holding full sway. Mm -hmm. Corrupt people exist everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. Only in Nagaland do you see them flaunting. I've said it before. Mm -hmm. So that's why you... Yeah, yeah, this is heaven for them, yeah? Heaven, heaven for ah, them. No checking, no restriction. The church is mum. Ah, yeah, when you talk about the alcohol, ah, you don't want to go to my One of my cousins, he came recently to visit me. And he told me about uh, they wanted to select a member for the church executive council. No? This uh, church executive council, not church, but the organization, okay? That's a very powerful position. Because you decide, no, the policies of the church, you decide uh, pastors uh, transfer what not no so they wanted to include then uh, one alcoholic no uh, then one person objected saying that say since we are church body it is not good that we should have a blatant alcoholic in our thing no then it's the other member so are you going to pay in this place <laughs> are you so going to pay put money no? okay, okay. Uh, okay, okay so even our church bodies, uh, mm -hmm. they include you depending on what money you have. No, uh, mm -hmm. they look into your pockets, no, not into your hearts. Uh. So, which means like uh, you are saying that equally, church is, even church is responsible. Yes, by I said acts of commission and omission. No? Uh, so, all of us are guilty, either through actively committing these crimes or keeping silent in these issues. So like, uh, so what is the meaning, I mean like, uh, the use of saying like, we said that Nagaland for Christ. Mm -hmm. I never, I have never said that. I said, I always write God save Nagaland, because he's the only one who can save us. Huh? Nagaland for Christ. Yeah, and now you, now you tell me what is the origin of the word. Yeah, there, uh, I'm so grateful you brought it up. Huh? And another question I want to ask everyone being also, who said that uh, Nagas will send 10,000 missionaries? And who made up this phrase, Nagaland for Christ? Uh, not the NBCC. Not the NBCC. It was. Uh, from what I gather, somebody said it and then it became 
uh, okay. attributed to the NPCC, you know, and then now it's become a must. Uh. Uh, it was never promised by NPCC? Uh, no, 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 no. Are you sure? I'm sure. Because I've been asking around for two years now. Huh? Okay. I uh, have <laughs> gone to London. Please something. write the one article. Uh, on I, uh, no, when I don't know who said it was. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> how can I write on it? Nah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Okay, you're still in uh, yeah, research. Yeah. You're still researching. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, we, again, maybe boldly, yeah, you have mm -hmm. already said, mentioned it, but I uh, wanted to ask from you. Again. Okay. This summon and apology tradition, mm -hmm. like, like you're writing something and you'll be summoned, mm -hmm. or else you have to write an uh, uh, apology in the newspapers. Mm -hmm. I think recently your friend, I think he seems to be your friend. Mm. Kevika or Keta or something. Kevito. Oh, Kevito. Oh, uh -huh. I think even he uh, had to. Hey, oh, oh, Kevito's case is different. Uh, see, the summons case and apology, no? Uh, they actually they are separate. Uh, yeah, uh, they are separate. Uh, because apology to anyone can give, no? Uh, so that's a different issue. But summons, I wrote uh, an article on this. Summons, 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 no? Uh, and then after that, the summon trend went down. But uh, I don't know. Uh, who's still using the summons now? Because I gave the thing. No, what is your opinion? This, this? Oh, that's illegal. You, anyone can check uh, the website of uh, local papers, no? I think it's printed in all four of them. Uh, Nagaland page, Borong, uh, mm -hmm. Nagaland post and thing. It's uh, just summon, summon, summons, no? And I wrote uh, the thing. So, one good thing I noticed was uh, one summon came up recently in the thing. Mm -hmm. Facebook and uh, one village, I will not mention the name, but the thing was they gave the rider, no? if you don't come, we will file court case. No? <laughs> because they have no authority. A uh, village does not have authority to summon you, you if you are from another village. Okay. Uh. So, so you are against it? Someone, huh? someone, someone kind of, someone. I'm against all the instances of breaking, breaking the law. No? Uh, okay. So that also comes under the thing. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, we have some certain questions from the bloggers. Oh, okay. Yes. And uh, I think it will take time. But, no, uh, no problem. No. See, I don't know how long your broadcast lasts or how patiently people will watch. No? For me, I'm free. No? Ah. Yeah. So, like, uh, okay. Yes? We have some, like, uh, there, are, there are people who wanted to know your opinion on delimitations. See. On the issue of delimitation, no? mm -hmm. I've also been a very petty guy uh, mm -hmm. because actually I'm in favor of delimitation mm -hmm. and I had planned to write on it. Uh, mm -hmm. But on one of my Facebook posts, totally unconnected with delimitation, one person uh, said that uh, wanted me, uh, sort of challenged me to write on delimitation. Then <laughs> I know this guy, he was one of the strongest supporters of Phaedon no, when I was fighting for Rupin Chama. So I said, you go and tell Pedan to fight for you, no? and I remain silent on that. No? Uh, okay. But anyway, see, when you talk about democracy, hmm, that is about votes. No? Mm -hmm. So, one person, one vote. Mm -hmm. no? And taking that further, mm -hmm. a group of persons no? have one representative. No? Mm -hmm. So, as far as feasibly possible. No, that group should be uniform. You cannot have one lakh people having one representative and one thousand people having one representative. That goes against a very basic uh, concept of democracy. So delimitation should be there. Uh, should be there. Yeah, should be there. And then uh, see the solution before delimitation. No, that is another big scam. No? Uh, because there is no solution. In the foreseeable future. Why? Hmm? Because they are, they don't have anything to show us. Mm -hmm. See, whether it's the IM or the seven and NPGs, they claim to be fighting for our rights. Then why can't they show us what they are asking for from the government of India? Why are we blame, blaming a uh, thing, Mr. Ravi, or the government of India? Before we blame them, why don't we ask our underground factions, what are you asking for? Let us know, so that we may together 
pressure the government of India or pressure Mr. Ravi. That is common sense. But the thing is, we are carried away by a few paid uh, people, okay? These people are paid either, I don't know, I, I don't think they are paid by cash, no? Uh, but they are paid with uh, prominence, no? They give him prominence, uh, they give him importance, they give him publicity, no? Uh, and they write all this bullshit, no? Which Naga swallow. Right? Just simple common sense, yeah? What are we asking for? <laughs> it was independence. Since they given up independence, what next? Tell us, let us know. What, what is the need to hide anything from us? And why always blaming India? Ah, India, divisive policy. As if we were so united. <laughs> ah. When did the nation of Nagaland, uh, Nagas ever exist? Yeah? We never ex existed as a nation. Just as India never existed as a nation. It is all because of the British. The British created India. And we also had a sense of oneness because of the British. So we are both in the same boat. Now India has given us extra privileges mm -hmm. and that, that also is being taken only by a section of our people. The common people are not enjoying those privileges which India, India is giving us. Now they are talking as if they are going to bring something more. No. So let us know what more are you going to give us other than what we have. It is simple common sense. So that's your on opinion on li delimitation. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, according to you, mm. okay, till that, mm. since 1963, uh -huh. after the establishment mm. of state, mm. Mm. is there any leader that you have admired or you want the same kind of leader in the state? No. Any leader? No, no. Not, not, not a single not, leader? Not to. Yes. Why? Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> you tell me which person has sacrificed anything for Nagaland in any way? You give me one example of a person. So you don't you don't have any such kind of I don't know of any such person. I don't know of any such person who has sacrificed anything of his own. Okay, you look at Mahatma Gandhi. He, is, he came from a very good background. The fact that I don't know, huh, but the fact that he was able to travel to England to study there and come back huh, means that he has come from a good background. Yeah, that's true. He gave up all that. He threw away his uh, coat suit tie, wore a dhoti, and then walked around India. That is how India got independence. You show me someone who has sacrificed a bit for Nagaland, then I will say that ah, this is the leader that I think. So you don't, you don't, you don't have any leader. No, no. Okay, so uh, there was uh, some questions mm. that people wanted to know. Mm -hmm. uh, that is like, uh, uh, will you contest election if you get an opportunity? See, when I first got this uh, group of young people together, I uh, think uh, Sinti, Bart, Kevito, uh, Tropika, Kaovi, uh, and then later on Amin. I called them, I, not because I knew them, but going by the comments on Facebook, no, they were balanced on every issue. Mm -hmm. no. So, I got them together and I said, see, there's no way you can change Nagaland until you hold political power. Because as I said earlier, revolution is impossible. Armed revolution is impossible. Social revolution is impossible. Because all the organizations are held by these people, the corrupt people. So, but my strategy again was different. What I said was, you must be willing to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Now, if I can get 60 people, 60 young people from Nagaland mm -hmm. who are willing to, who, can, who are able to spend one or two lakhs each and who are willing to travel across their constituencies 
educating people on their rights. Then I will contest elections. If not, no. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be very difficult. No, educate, uh, educate the rights. Mm, mm. So, Which, see, I will not be contesting to win. Mm -hmm. I'll be contesting to thing, spread awareness. Awareness. Uh, see, I tried that experiment with Akavi. Yeah, he came yesterday. I told him I, and then <laughs> there was a laugh. I said, see, I told the others. This is what I tried to teach Akavi. I told him, when you go, don't make big promises. You address the audience according to their needs. So to the villager, you say that you will make sure that they get all their MG and RJ money. The right. Uh, that you'll make sure that all the government LP and ME schools are functioning properly. You'll make sure that all the health centers are functioning properly. Mm -hmm. And you teach them the benefits of having this. Saying that if the schools are functioning properly, you will not have to send your children to government schools. I mean to uh, private schools in the towns. So you will save money. See, we have to educate people to the things they are missing. A villager he does not know that he is missing. Mm -hmm. When you don't know what you are missing, then how will you know that you are missing it? Mm -hmm. So you have to teach them the things that they are missing. Mm -hmm. So this will be an educative process and it will take time. It will take at least four or five elections before people understand. But it has to start somewhere. It has uh, to start somewhere. Uh, okay, which means like uh, it, sixty percent chances is there that you will be contesting mm. election. I like come <laughs> on, <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, one in sixty. Yeah, okay. <laughs> one in sixty. Okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, thank you so much, and uh, yeah, friends. Uh, I think uh, we'll be winding up. Anyway, so like, uh, thank you so much, sir. And uh, like uh, right now, we would like to go for if there is any live questions. If you have any live questions, uh, you can please forward in the comment section. Uh, any live questions? Okay. Okay. Uh, I think, uh, sir. We have some questions. Oh, oh. Uh, we forward it. Oh. But uh, before that, uh, one message to the educated, unemployed youth of Nagaland. Uh, uh, this uh, opinion, uh, your suggestions. my opinion is: see, we can talk about creating job opportunities. We can talk about uh, opening factories, industries. No? But the thing is, what are your job skills? Last year, I was invited by the Pisami Village Students Union to address uh, their village council. I mean, the, their student gathering. I said, "See, you have to understand the value of your education." So, in developed countries, class twelve, our class twelve, is where people make decisions about the future, and the vast majority, uh, majority of them, they do not go to college. But here for us, it is as if it is a rule that we have to go to college, we have to graduate, we have to go for a master's, get PhDs. And then you see this, we get PhDs, we get master's, we come back uh, and search for backdoor constables. What is the point in that? If you wanted to be a constable, you should have gone when you passed class 8. So please understand why, what you are studying and why you are studying that. Don't waste your time, don't waste your time, don't waste your parents' money just for the sake of getting degrees which have no value in real life. So get job skills. That's all I can say. Job skills. Yeah, job Focus skills. Focus on, yeah, yeah. more on job yeah. skills. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you, sir. But uh, one thing, uh, hmm. I think I mustn't, uh, this a little bit out of our context, uh, but I think I must ask you this question. Mm -hmm. It's I think mm -hmm. two two person. They were very viral sensation in Nagaland. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, what's your just you know your opinion? Uh, who Number one is uh, the doctor Pankaj Gupta. Uh, yes, yeah. a viral sensation. Yes, yes, yes. Like them khatra. Uh -huh. Okay. Number two is uh, we all know. Jolly Matthew. Or who? No, no. Who? 
Hmm. The lady from Kolkata. Wow, I am. I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So, what's your see? Okay, Doctor Pangaj Gupta. Let's keep I, I, yeah. it. Or we will we'll go to Pangaj Gupta first uh, okay. because these <laughs> people are very puzzled about why I've been silent. No, uh, okay. See, in life, mm-hmm. the first thing we have to examine is the motive. Okay, when a person does something, we always look for the motive. Mm-hmm. Now, Dr. Pankaj Gupta, I thought he was a medical doctor. Okay. Before he became the sensation, somebody passed one of his videos and then it was okay. Like he was saying, uh, giving instructions of how to maintain social. I thought a uh, medical doctor. Okay. Then I later on, uh, that was uh, nearly after one month, no, that this came out. And I received so many, you know, to, that's why I hate WhatsApp, okay. okay. Uh, and I removed myself from all groups. Because you get the same message over and over again. Yeah, no? uh, true, so true. anyway, I saw that and then uh, I was listening to it. No, then yeah, okay, I was listening. Then I think I was on five or six minutes into the thing. Then suddenly he said that Nagaland government do jani na corona virus not spread cruelly. No, the moment I heard it, no, I said hey, you're gone. No? <laughs> <laughs> because there are things you say. See, I have called our politicians the bureaucrats. I have called them. Thieves, no. Uh, mm-hmm. I have called them a thing, immoral people, no. Uh, unethical, no. All that, but these are things I can prove, and they know very well that I can prove it. So mm-hmm. they remain silent. People say that, ah, why are you not someone? Are I'm not a fool, no. And the people I'm talking against are not fools. Mm-hmm. So I know up to what extent I can go, uh, and the line. I should not cross the line where they can do anything to me. So the moment I heard that, I knew that uh, this guy is going too far. Because many people while speaking, you know, they fall in love with the sound of their own voice. Okay, this is very mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. and they move away from the script. I think he plans things, but he was so carried, so excited that he said that. The moment he said, I knew that it's gone, and then I didn't pay attention because see when you're trying, I take this business of battling corruption seriously. I am not here for publicity. I am not here to make money. Mm-hmm. But this fellow comes out of nowhere and suddenly he undermines the hard work that other people are doing. See, I don't care whether he gets a million likes. That has nothing to do with I am not in competition with him for likes on YouTube. I don't even think. I, see, this also was I was quite reluctant, but since this another platform to spread awareness, Facebook also I use that to spread awareness. Of course, I joke around friends, uh, but the, my main intention is to spread awareness. So this he did that. Now he's facing the consequences of what he said, and there are people who are worried day and night, thinking of the welfare of others. No? Then you have this unknown person. Who appears on social media and everybody is following him, following him as if he's going to bring changes. I, change is not going to come from outside, no. And it is a very difficult process. So okay, he took public attention. Now where are his supporters? And the people who are supporting him, they have strengthened the case against him. Because the government of Nagaland has stated that this fellow is spreading co- uh, spreading communal hatred. Now, for the proof, they can just go to the Facebook post and all those people writing, Angami, Angami, no, uh, see, that, that is spreading no, communal hatred. So his supporters uh, are strengthening the case against him. So I'm not really bothered what happens to him. Uh, I asked about Jolly Matthew because that is one issue where I really regret ah, because he had there was no fault on his part and I don't know the motives behind the people who I approached but I wanted to get in touch with his family members mm-hmm. to show them the way how to get Jolly Matthew out and if I had done that no ah, there would be five or six police top cops who would have lost their jobs okay Jolly Matthew issue no? if it come to court no there is kidnapping Mm. 
illegal arrest, illegal extraction, illegal confinement. All that would have come in the court of law. I am think ready to think. If they see this and they think that I have crossed the line, come take me to court. I will prove it. The only problem was I had no local standard. Joshua Shekhi, one of our lawyers, very pro I think prominent lawyer, the guy who uh, got the rights for the disabled in the NPC. Mm -hmm. We had a conversation and he was willing to take up the case. You only have a case in high court. He was corpus, no? it's called uh, police the person. Then once uh, it, the accused comes to court, then the government will have to say why they arrested him, on what grounds. Are you leaking the backdoor appointment list of government employees is not a crime. These are documents which are supposed to be in the public domain. Mm -hmm. So, no, that, anyway, uh, what is gone is gone. Uh. And uh, this uh, Pangaj Gupta also, uh, so he now he's in custody, I don't know what they're doing. Uh, Akavi also was summoned twice. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then I found out that uh, he was calling up, uh, he himself told me he was calling up Pangaj Gupta. No, what, for what purpose I don't That's why I, I told Akavi, you jump on every bandwagon. No? <laughs> you see, no? uh, there are issues, no? no it's good uh, to f listen to people, to follow people, but you should know which issues to support which issues to speak out on. No? Just because every passing Tom, Dick and Harry says something, ah, yes, 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 yes follow them. No? Same with Hima Chaudhary. Say this Hima Chaudhary, I was called up by, uh, I, I, I keep forgetting his name, uh, the Times of India, he's an associate editor. He called me up before yesterday, he called me up yesterday also on this issue. So I said, it's not a big issue. No? And he's very familiar with Nagaland. I said, see, Nagaland, I'll call his band. I said, hey, you know what the, how the band is going? He said, yeah, 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 I also bought. No? <laughs> so same is going to be with Dogme. No? Mm. The thing is, the, it is not out of concern for uh, animal rights. Uh, it's just a purely political decision. If Manika Gandhi had not written, uh, mm -hmm. and if all the animal lovers uh, in India had written, uh, there would have been no effect. Uh. But it's because Manika Gandhi wrote that they took this action. You're sure. Uh, and then, I'm not worried. Yeah, we create storms and teacups. Okay. What? Uh, the original post was in PFA, People for Animals. Huh? That is a Manika Gandhi thing. Huh? Mm -hmm. do, you go and check. Yeah? I was uh, joking around no, with these people. No? One American woman came and called me a monster. No? I call her witch, no? <laughs> she said that she'll turn me into a dog, no, so that my dog uh, thing can eat me. I said, I'll turn it to turn it so your vegan, vegan friends can eat you, no? See, I was just taking it as a joke, no? And that one lady also. No, let me come. Yeah. One lady was saying, ah, she will write to the UN, no, uh, to ban dog meat in Nagaland and China, no. So I took a quick, quick Google search, no. Then I found that Nigeria, uh, then uh, Vietnam, we know, no. Uh, then Korea, and then I found Switzerland also, yeah. Uh, dog meat is thing, no. So I said, don't forget to mention these countries, no, when you write to the UN. No? Uh, see, these are these people. They do all. It's very good that Koholi, no, and uh, the Naga. Uh, Mirror team filed affairs. Finish. That is the end of the issue. Uh, now we should be watching and seeing what the government of Nagaland does. No. Mm -hmm. It's not that uh, all of us have to post about her. No. I'm getting a bit sick. No. Seeing her face. No. Every time I log on to Facebook. No? <laughs> and now Amitabh Bachchan has taken her place. Now with the coronavirus. No? <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh? Uh, I don't consider it anything. Yeah. Mm. Thank you so much, uh, mm. friends, and uh, thank you for supporting us, Timapur, today. And uh, we believe in coming days also, you'll be supporting us to reach more people. And uh, yeah, please do suggest us the name of the name to whom we must approach. Right? Yes. Because your name was suggested oh, by yes. yeah. the bloggers themselves. Oh, so you want me to suggest someone? Or you can suggest, yes. I think uh, you should. Think, uh, you should know. Uh, think 
called Bart Hongse. Bart Hongse. Uh, very, but uh, he's got, you know, his father goes to health problems. You know, so I think you like just that. Otherwise, uh, I, very thing. And then there's our, what is it at Mokshun? There's another young boy, uh, Chuba Longkumar. M. Chuba Longkumar, because he's very intelligent. Uh, uh, just can yeah, convey of course, others. Uh, no, so uh, Bart, I hope you come on next. Uh, I hope you make the time. Yeah. Mm, God willing. And thank you all for watching. Thank you so and, much. And thank you for the Marvel team uh, for mm -hmm. giving me this opportunity to spread uh, a little bit of awareness. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, you Francis. Okay, thank you.